So the SOC2, when they're looking at an SOC2 Type 2 report, there's five trust principles that are available to the SOC2 report. Security, confidentiality, privacy, processing integrity, and availability. Now, in most cases, everybody's pretty familiar with security. They understand that it's access controls and uh, things of that nature. But oftentimes, availability is really uh, not very well understood. Availability, really, the trust principle is trying to provide comfort that what you, the services that you're being provided will be available to you at any given time or per your service level agreement. So if I've got a, uh, an agreement with a client or with a, excuse me, with a service organization that guarantees me 99.99% uptime, then I can, should be able to feel comfortable that I'm going to have very little downtime, that that, that is going to be available to me when I need it. That's very important for software as a service providers, for example, in order to, to ensure that when you need something or need to use that software, it's available to you and, and there's, and that's the downtime, if any, is going to be minimal. In addition, there's a lot of confusion between confidentiality and privacy. And really, to put it in a nutshell, confidentiality it really re relates more to the separation of client data so that one client doesn't see another client's data, or confidentiality from the perspective of the people that use the data understand that they have to keep it confidential when they're using the data. Privacy actually is more about personal private information and, for example, electronic patient health information. If, uh, if, that's a, if that's being used by the company that is providing an SOC report, then privacy is applicable. If they manipulate or they have the capability to manipulate personal private information, privacy does have an application there. If they don't have any way to manipulate the data, for example, if they're just a data center that has a client's client server there and the client's responsible for maintaining and has the only access to that personal private information, then privacy may not apply to that data center. Um, the last one is processing integrity. And processing integrity oftentimes is not seen in many reports. And I think that's, that may not be the correct way to consider that because processing integrity provides you comfort that if you're using software as a service, that that software operates properly, that the calculations are correct that the data manipulation that's going on within that per particular application is correct and applicable. And that, that really gives you the kind of comfort you need to know that if you're using, let's say, a payroll service provider, that when they calculate your taxes, that it's going to be correct. If you compare and contrast an SOC1 report and an SOC2 report that uses processing integrity, oftentimes the processing integrity will provide you more comfort over the controls that are in place for the manipulation of the data within a particular software. For example, if it's a payroll processor, then you get some comfort that the payroll tax calculations are done properly and correctly. You get some comfort that the, uh, the data that is being used to move from one, let's say, one area to another, or when you bring up a partic particular employee, the data is correct. That's processing integrity. And that gives you, you get that kind of comfort from an SOC2 report with that trust principle. From an SOC1 perspective, you may not get that granular detail. And so you'll get more of the processes that are involved in the payroll company. For example, the onboarding of, of the, the new employees, the onboarding of new clients, you know, what their processes are uh, to receive information from you. But you don't get that level of comfort for that processing integrity. And that's a key point because I think oftentimes you actually want both of those, those, that level of comfort.